go on here. I'm not here yet. But I thought I'd get some reminders out. And Don, you want to start off? Yes, sir. I do. Let me take that mic from you. We got a special day today. Today is the Reed C. Oaks Veterans Association meeting. And it's at 2 o'clock this afternoon. And it's right here in Town Hall. And our guest speaker is Lieutenant General Benny Cabot. So, come on by here, great speaker and a great American. Talk to you about what's good for what's good for our great country. Okay, so we'll see you at two o'clock this afternoon here. Thank you, Chris. You're welcome. Yeah, you can, after this meeting, you can go over to the North End Room, have lunch, and, and then come back down here. Very easy evening morning. No, the uh, other reminder is we have a cocktail party on Thursday, 3.30 here. Got some great music. The jazz pools are going to be playing the music. They're very good people. Very good music. Also, next week, the 18th, we have our resident organization January quarterly meeting. So put that on your calendar. It's, uh, yeah, it's here. At 10 o'clock. I don't think we'll be in the in the new hall yet, just yet. So, uh, anybody have any, any other announcements? No. Okay. Put it on pause. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. I'll take that. I'll take that. Well, obviously, I will be hosting our Tuesday talk moving forward. Uh, as I mentioned, I did not have any intentions of coming through the community and changing anything anytime soon. I really just wanted to kind of roll into uh, your schedule and Brent's schedule. So we will keep this going. And then, of course, I will work with Chris. There he went. Uh, to, of course, make sure that I'm addressing uh, the topics of concern. So we'll just kind of roll right into it. Uh, it will be a little bit uh, brief for short today. And then, of course, as we get going, I will continue to have content, topic, and answers. So uh, bear with me. The first few will probably be. I don't know the answer to that, but I'll get it for you. I'm not in the business of making things up if I don't know it. So uh, I'll be very transparent with you and, and let you know. So you got it going. Two seconds. There we go. All right. So Tuesday talk, of course, January 10th. I did want to do a quick update from Chris. I know you guys had a meeting yesterday or any additional updates. Or you already ran over through that. Perfect. Okay, we'll keep moving. Okay, so just a couple updates. Again, um, complete transparency. We have had a couple of uh, staffing issues that have occurred in the healthcare center. Evan is going to be over there helping us in the admissions. He is, of course, still in his role. However, for the time being, he will be uh, kind of doing a dual role. So if there are any issues that you do have immediately, and if you are not able to reach him, please reach out to the front desk or Wanda at extension 335. Um, he did stick with the original dates uh, that, we, that he communicated to us that we would be going back to our regular services on the 16th. So I have not heard any changes or variances from that. We should uh, maintain those services as of the 16th. He did also want me to remind you that the Name the Vacuums contest is continuing and that will go through this Friday. So I do believe those are at the front desks and uh, you just kind of drop um, your, your two cents in there and we can get the names of uh, those new vacuums. So that again is going through Friday. Betsy? Okay, so most importantly for this week, a very monumental moment for I'm sure everyone is Brant's Bon Voyage. I think at this point he's probably ready. I know he's been saying goodbye for many months, right? So I love that photo and thank you Betsy for that photo. I want to keep that on my desk as a remembrance of Brant's. But he's out of here. It's been a good 17 years and I think he's done with us. Huh? So. So just a reminder, uh, come say farewell to Brant at the monthly cocktail party. Um, it is going to be the 12th, that is Thursday, at 3.30 in the Grand Lobby South. And just an additional reminder from Ginger, the Regency Oaks Veterans Association will be later on today at 2 p.m. as well. 
Did you have anything at the extra store for that, Ginger? No. no. So, I was hoping to give a little bit more information on construction. Um, I will soon. not say soon, but um, shortly. <laughs> so, <laughs> shortly. <laughs> So uh, what we do know, we are, uh, Brett and I have been kind of going every day and walking the site. Uh, we do know that LCS Development and Peak will be doing their walk and their punch on the 24th. There are still some kind of minor items and things that we are working through and they will be utilizing um, both of the tours from Health Peak and LCS on the 24th to kind of help identify those last remaining items that we need to address for such a large scale project. Uh, the occupancy of the building is depending on the temporary occupancy permit and we do not have a date for that thus far. So again, I don't like to make things up to you. I would love to give you a date, but I do not have one just yet. So uh, more to come shortly. <laughs> Just continuing with our COVID and our flu discussion, we are encouraging if you don't feel well, if you have the sniffles, if you have any type of symptoms, please communicate to the front desk, please communicate to our team. Um, sit tight in your homes. We will bring your meals. We will do what we need to take care of you, but we want to make sure we do not have any additional exposure. We want to mitigate the spread of COVID and the flu. It is still that season. We actually have one um, positive COVID case for an IL resident and one positive COVID case for an associate. So again, please, um, our information is only as good as your communication. So please let us know if that happens to affect you. That way we can not only help take care of you, but also offer those services. Okay. Right, so I did want a reminder. I had kind of asked the team for any feedback, um, and Perry with our sales team wanted me to remind you that we are paying you $3,000 to pick your neighbors. So if you refer a friend, and if they move in, and they have to be here 90 days, is that correct? Let me make sure I have that. 90 days, we will give you a $3,000 resident referral. So uh, not only do you get to have your friends here, you get $3,000. So. Just a reminder, and the anxiously awaited discussion, I am sure, I, I imagine most of you have received our letter that we put out yesterday. Uh, Brent was so kind and to kind of sit down and make sure that we were able to have that discussion, take that back to the table, and we heard what you said. So really, I wanted to tell you, again, thank you for voicing your concerns. Lots of you have apologize to me from last Tuesday. There's no need to apologize. I appreciate your passion and I appreciate you giving us the opportunity to discuss it versus just turning in your notices, right? We don't want that. So again, we heard you and we took that back to the table and for now we are stepping back and we will revisit that topic, the $3.50 pickup fee at a later date. I did. <laughs> We appreciate the passion in your message, and uh, we do just appreciate the continued collaboration. I did ask Brant to attend this last Tuesday talk in the event that there were any additional questions, comments, or clarification on that topic, because I can't give that to you right this second. So, yes, ma'am. What about the delivery charge? The uh, delivery charge uh, has been an ongoing charge for many, many years, and so it will continue. Uh, and I think the new rate is 550. Too much. So the delivery charge will remain intact at the 550, but we are getting rid of the takeaway fee of the 350. Temporarily or permanently? For the 350? Permanently for now. <laughs> Permanently for now. We can, again, you know, it's it's something that uh, we were met with great upset, and it's something that uh, is not a priority on everything we want to do together in 2023. Any other questions or comments? Yes. 
First, I want to thank you for taking this into consideration. My question is, will dining then take those charges off that we've had the first part of the month since we didn't get any response? That is a good question. Yeah. Yes. We don't have to tell anybody that they need to do that? Okay. Yeah, they, they'll just never make it to your bill. Okay. So they will show up in the software, but they'll just never make it to your bill, okay. so you can just ignore them. They will carry out through the rest of the month. Uh, so if, if you've accumulated $16 worth of charges, they'll continue to show, but then when it goes to final billing, we just won't pick up any of the ancillary. That's good, because it'll be over 100 okay. each. <laughs> well, and please keep in mind, the last component of that letter was to kindly request and encourage your attendance. We understand everyone has different lives. We understand that you have different activities and that your idea of socialization and, and whatnot, but we want to make sure that we can remain having our dining services, the exemplary services that they are. You do not get the best quality of food in a box. So we are still encouraging your attendance to our dining areas, whether that be the gastro pub or any of the dining rooms. Any other? I don't. I don't. I didn't get a letter oh. yet. Are they really in? Why didn't you the sidewalk? They're in the boxes. Pardon, pardon me. We went in the mailboxes last night, Jean. So. Okay. Uh, um, we had a meeting in regards of widening the road out here for a trail around the campus. Um, I don't know where that was left, but uh, can you fill us in on where we stand on that, please? So as uh, part of our uh, capital budget, uh, there was $150,000 to get started. That was the first incremental developmental stage of the tarmac replacement. That was put in last year's capital budget and was carried over into this year's capital budget. We still do not have capital budgets in our hands. We have the operational budgets, and as we shared with you last week, we anticipate having the capital budgets uh, the 15th, which is next Monday. So as soon as we know something, we'll be able to give you an update, uh, Ed, as to where that stands. Thank you. Uh, Brant Leslie, uh, our, I notice our dear friends Schaefer uh, are just doing a splendid job. I take I take that with tongue in cheek. Um, I got that. Yeah, I know. It's, it appears that their restoration of the sod seems to be quite limited to just very kind of specific areas that they like to do. And uh, quite honestly, I would request that you and Peak take a real strong look at all the other areas that they destroyed, like the grass area that they used for the parking lot, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And notice where the trench coming around. They, they seem to be uh, on the short end of the stick. Okay, I'm not punching it out, but if I were, I would. Yeah. Sure. So we actually did uh, take that walk earlier this morning, right before this meeting, and we are having those conversations with uh, Schaefer. And so here, just to give you a little color on this, and so they're, they're, uh, the single most important thing is to get that occupancy permit. We've got to get this thing, uh, whether it's temporary or permanent, we've got to get this thing open. And so the strategy is uh, cut some corners and get this thing done so that we can get the occupancy uh, permit. They're not, Schaefer's not going anywhere. Beslow's not going anywhere. Lindsay is going to hold them accountable. And so, yes, uh, the landscaping is not where it needs to be. And there are some things that are totally unacceptable, including the, the new Mount Regency over here on the, the side. We'd have to get a goat in order to, to mow it. Uh, there are some gutter issues. There are some paving issues. There are a, a lot of unresolved issues. But the strategy was put a Band-Aid on it get it permitted, we're meeting, they're meeting the basic requirements to get the CO, and then we'll come back in the punch out and take care of those issues. So thanks for, for raising that. I'll, I'll do it. Couldn't we, couldn't we spared, I appreciate that. Congrats. We spared five more bags of mulch yeah. to cover them out. Yeah. They did a lot of nice planning yesterday. I was out there with them. 
couldn't they have spared five more days to cut the dirt, man, in front of my view? It's coming, Lou. We're going to take care of you. Five days. <laughs> What's a new word? It's not soon. Shortly. 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 <laughs> Hold the check. <laughs> <laughs> he sees me get through. He sees me. Hey, Chris. 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 He's got to get around the wire. Okay, Chris. Just a quick question. Um, the there's no no longer a push button on the outside of this door. If we're going to use this door again. We can't come through with walkers and wheelchairs and things like that. Can we get one put on? You can go punch, but push buttons to go out, so but not to come in. Say the same thing it wasn't in the drawings, but it will come once we show it. Okay. Oh yeah. So it was not in the original drawings, but we will work on that once they have the permit. Because we had it. Yeah. Your turn, Lindsay. There is one thing that probably doesn't bother a lot of people, but it has bothered me and several others. That one lone tree in the very back of what is the stage area, the bump out in the back of the town hall, that one tree that they planted back there is off center. Yeah. If they're only going to have one, for heaven's sakes, it needs to be centered. So maybe they could just put in another tall tree on the side that it's off. To try to balance it up a little bit, it really, it really bothers me. <laughs> well, I am sorry about that. I would go look at that one tree. It's, it's for those who yeah. are well, it's down. Well, of course, I think so too. Town hall. Then he's from up to the town hall. Yeah. 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 I'm writing everything down. I don't know if Betsy's taking notes too. I, I have a question. Um, last week, right here, over here. Oh. <laughs> uh, last week uh, at Tuesday talk, I asked about the uh, Lanai uh, vinyls being replaced. But I also want to point out to all of you residents who have vinyls, if you get one panel replaced, all they do is replace the vinyl. And that's $75. If you count your windows out there, $1,500, because it includes new framing and new clips, is a real deal. Because if you have 20 windows, that is, is uh, $1,500 without frames and clips. So you better take a look, because if one of them is cracked, the rest are on their way. Do you know yet when that's going to happen? I, I don't, uh, but uh, we prioritized it with uh, Juan last week, and so next uh, Tuesday talk we'll uh, come back with an update. I'll make a note and Lindsay can come back with a, with a date. <coughs> I'd like to say I had mine done uh, two weeks ago, and they're beautiful. It's wonderful. They did a wonderful job. Thank you for that. Oh, yeah. I, um, this is, I just wanted to tell everybody that on Friday, the Clearwater Historical Society will begin their monthly lectures and they'll be here in this room Friday at two o'clock and the talk this time will be on the Tokobaga Indians and they were an Indian they go the Indians that go back to the 1500s and they were the major tribe in the Tampa Bay area so I it's going to be a very interesting talk and we'll get to learn a lot about these people and even maybe some folklore Absolutely. So please come at two o'clock Friday I support your interest in getting more people to uh, eat in the dining room. I'm concerned, however, whether you'll be able to handle it. As an example, last night, <clears throat> my reservation was at 515. 
we, re we ordered our meal as soon as we sat down and it was served at 645. Oh, that's an hour and a half wait. And so I'm concerned about whether you're equipped to really do the job if large people re return. Would you please address that? Absolutely. So that is a legitimate concern and it is a legitimate question. And we know the ask, right? So we do anticipate on working with our dining services as, you know, kind of to make sure that we are addressing that. Uh, we know we don't want a bunch of the takeouts, but we do also know that we need to be staffed appropriately to give you those services. So that is a discussion that I'll get some additional feedback from Grant. Um, oh, last okay. week. An hour and a half is just Absolutely. Too much. I agree. Were out in Johnny and I agree. Ricky were Several Absolutely. people left and never got to they left had to leave because and i do apologize for that because i agree that is that is absolutely unnecessary and probably not a very enjoyable experience so that is something that i will meet with the dining program about to make sure that we can uh, get in front of and improve upon lindsay lindsay you are the ceo of this organization are all fee incre increases come from you or does anything come from corporate office? So, <laughs> while I cannot speak to exactly the processes here at Regency Oaks, but as a company with Life Care Services and as a being the executive director at another community with Life Care Services, it is a combination. It comes from ownership, from Health Peak, Life Care Services Corporation with executive director, resident collaboration and input. That answer that for you? <laughs> the monthly fee is dictated by your contract. Is ancillary charges are the answer that you just gave, right? Okay. Yes, yes. I'm sorry, I might have misunderstood your question. I, I thought you were asking about something else. But yes, those monthly service fees in regards to your contract come from the contracts that you guys sign. Was that the question? But any of the fees that that you impose are coming from you and not from the corporate office. I well, Grant, so, maybe yeah, I can so, help you know, that. here's here's the way I always think about that is everybody is represented because everybody has a seat at the table. And so residents have a voice in any ancillary increases, as does the executive director and Corporate is going to weigh in as well. And of course, ownership is ultimately the one who will make those decisions. But when you think about, you know, is there a person that you can reach out and touch and say, you're accountable, when it comes to those ancillary fees, that's the correct thinking, is everybody has input because everybody is seated at a table and trying to make a decision that is in the best interest of the community, uh, both from an ownership's perspective and from the, the resident's point of view as well. Hello. Hi. I'm Rosa. I live in the North Building. And on Sundays and Tuesdays before I play Pinochle, I like to work out in the fourth floor gym for 10 minutes. I notice the Biodex chair has been moved to the new gym. Is it possible to get another one back up there? Hmm. I would have to look into that. I don't know the answer. Okay. So I don't know why it was moved. I'll get some background on that. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to make a comment about the glass tin lanai. I uh, moved in two years ago. Uh, I have a glass tin lanai. I still have not been able to hire a cleaning service to clean the windows. And I'm wondering if there's any way uh, we can be supported in trying to maintain the integrity of the lanai. So I can most certainly, I'll get some uh, background from Grant and the team on that. I imagine there's some type of schedule or routine for window cleaning. Yeah, there's a cleaning department. Yeah. Okay. Okay. A-103. Associated with it. Yeah. 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 
So I'll get a little bit more background so I can give you an accurate for that. From my understanding, there is a fee. There is a fee for that. Any other questions? Any other feedback? Yes. I went to, we went to the dining room yesterday, okay. and after an hour, we left without eating. Yes, I'm Sitting sorry there, about that. You know, and so, yep. no food. I understand. It's not pleasant to go there and just sit and wait and wait. No. I agree, and we kind of just discussed the that. The kitchen we doesn't, it's very backed up. You know, not enough people in the kitchen. Well, we, like I mentioned, we will be meeting with the dining team so we can make sure that we're in front of that. We'll do some strategizing. I'll, of course, see the whys, right? I don't know exactly. Was it just the incident from yesterday and it was isolated? Was it an ongoing problem um, with the team? I hear you. Okay. I hear you. All right. So that will be one other thing that we will work together to address and make sure that we can see some improvement. Along those, same, along those same lines, uh, it wasn't us, but two couples left the North uh, brunch without having gotten their food. They were waiting for it to get boxed up so they could take it home. I understand. Noted. Noted. Absolutely. Okay. So that would definitely be something that I need to meet with the team about. Any other feedback? Any other questions for myself or Brant's last Tuesday talk? I'll, I'll phone him in the next one for additional feedback. <laughs> there are a couple of alternatives. You can go to the pub reservation. You don't have to dress up. But it's closed on weekends, true. But also there's lunch in the North Dining Room. You don't have to dress up for that, too. So there's a couple of alternatives besides the main dining room. Anything else? Any other questions, feedback? No? Is that it? We're adjourned. All right, we're adjourned. Thank you very much.